Steubenville had that mystique, you know, and you're playing Reno, and playing yeah. the Big Red, and it, you know, it was just, you knew what they were bringing, yeah. because we'd go watch them play other teams like at Boardman, and you see 20 tour buses. So when you make the playoffs, uh, I think that was at East Liverpool, Steubenville, um, shoot, that was when it was uh, no home games, it was all... Uh, yeah, neutral sites. Neutral sites. They try to find a common yeah. meeting place. That was the, <laughs> that was an elect. When you talk about uh, uh, making the playoffs, that was really an electric time. I mean, because oh, yeah. you're sitting around waiting for the call. I mean, yeah. you had you, you had to sit. I had to sit at home and wait for a telephone call to tell me, number one, you're in, and number two, this is who you're going to play. Okay, and this is where you're going to play. Um, and um, uh, uh, then, then you know, you, get, you call your staff, you get together and, and film exchange, and then the media comes out, and they're doing an interview on you. And um, we, we remember we got, after the season was over and everything, we got honored by the Eastwood Mall. I mean, yeah. they presented us with a check, and... And a plaque, and and because uh, uh, it, it, it was uh, like sixteen teams get in now. I mean, like Rick said, f four teams were getting in, and uh, if you were one of those four, it was a special. Yeah, made it a special season. Yeah, it made it really difficult. So when you did get in, it was a big deal, and it was electric's the word. You know, it was, I mean, we brought a good following of fans, and we had great following all year. Um, you know, because people were excited. It was like what you had heard about, you know, decades before with Cheney football, and it, it was a big deal. And, uh, you know, for me, like, I never had the opportunity to play against Steubenville. I was able to watch it, mm -hmm. you know, with my brother. And my freshman year was another tough one. Probably could have won the game down there. Um, you know, and you, so Steubenville had that mystique, you know, and you're playing – Reno and you're playing yeah. the big red and it, you know it was just you knew what they were bringing yeah. because we'd go watch them play other teams like at Boardman and you see 20 tour buses roll in and their fans so and you're playing them on the river yeah, <laughs> no, yeah so right, we're playing right. them like a home right. game it's not too far from Steubenville no. that's for sure um I guess what did that mean for you in terms of you know if I'm not mistaken your dad graduated from Cheney right correct um I think you mentioned that your brother graduated. You you you've heard some of the the lore and the success. You've seen the down years, and now you have the opportunity to be part of the first, the first playoff team, which was really surprising to me. You know that it was 1990, but the first playoff team. I guess what did that mean to you personally, especially many years after that? You know, I never looked at it from like a personal standpoint. I think it was. Um, for us, the Cheney football family, it was kind of like validation, mm -hmm. you know, of like what, you know, you, cause all these other schools, you know, you, you had the Moonies, you had the Ursulines, you know, the success that they had and everybody looked down on us. Well, you guys never made the playoffs. You're not, you know, so it was kind of validated, not just where we were, but around us from the surrounding schools. And I think, you know, and that from a coach's standpoint, you know, that's validation for them, you know, mm -hmm. that, that this whole thing was working, this whole process, this, everything was kind of starting to move in motion. And I, I think for every, it was, I never looked at it from a personal standpoint. I looked at it from a school standpoint because, you know, I always took so much pride in that school and anybody associated with it that like when you talk bad about it and you you're constantly having these personal battles with you know because you're playing all these other sports right. and you know other kids making comments it, it gave us that validation that we were like some of these other schools mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and that was a big deal um so steubenville you know that's that's a tough one play them tough uh once again so you know you go into your your senior year um what are your thoughts kind of entering your senior year football-wise? You know, I, I think 
we knew we had lost a good core of players, um, especially defensively and on the line, some really good players from that 92 class. So I, I think it was, I think nobody really, and I, we knew we had good skill. We had some really good players coming back, you know, and obviously, you know, you got speed, you got skill, you can make things happen. Mm -hmm. um, we had a little, we had experience. We, we definitely had experience, especially in the offense, offensive side of the ball from, you know, your skill positions. Um, I think there, you know, obviously defense was going to be a, a work in progress. Um, I think that the task was going to be, we knew Fitch was going to be really good that year. Um, and I, I, <laughs> I, I, funny story. My father still tells me to this day and he laughs about it is like, I remember going up to Fitch, they were scrimmaging. I want to say St. Ignatius or somebody like it was one of the big schools up at Fitch and they absolutely destroyed him. And my dad told me, he goes, well, I just upped your life insurance. A little bit. <laughs> you know, like almost like, wow, this team, you guys are going to have your hands full. You know, like last year was great. But I think once that game and we got going, we knew we were okay. You know, it was like you had that feeling. And we went down 10 nothing right off the get-go. And I, I remember coaches' halftime talk. We were getting the ball to start the second half. And that was going to be a determining factor. And I want to say we took it 80 yards, 75 yards, went right down the field and scored, made it a 10-7 game. And, you know, I think we kind of put them on their heels a little bit. And, you know, it kind of got us going a little bit like, hey, we're pretty good. You know, so I think that was kind of the point we knew we were going to be all right. What, 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 were, what were your thoughts going into that 92 season? Pretty much the same. I mean – Knowing that we had, uh, you know, offensively in, in pre ninety, actually pre ninety one, you know, was was always kind of a struggle. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, because because you know, I mean, defensively, you could you could get by with just playing hard and having tough kids, a um, uh, little more nuance involved in, uh, in, uh, in the offensive side. And as I have said in the past, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on the job learning. And so we felt, I think we felt, uh, like Rick said, uh, good about our prospects going, going into that 92 year. Um, don't let Pope here. You say there's more nuance to the offense than the defense. <laughs> that was always a big argument. Yeah. Um, you know, so then you, it's another great year. You know, you get Fitch. I think I, we talked about this. I think that was the first time in 13, 14, 15 years that, that, that Cheney had beat Fitch back to back. It was a long time. Yeah. Um, well, the, the, the 90. 91 year was the first time in 10 years, I think. Right. And then so to have back-to-back -back was... Oh, yeah. Was, uh, um, and, and you know what? You think about it, like I remember coaching in those games um, your whole spring, your whole summer, double sessions. Like it was geared up for that game, which could be really good or it could be a really deflating loss if it doesn't work out and, and that's why we used to always say if we can get two out of the first three yeah you know we'll, we'll, we'll be headed for a good season that's kind of the trap to put have that big rivalry game week one put all that emphasis on it and then it could ruin a season yeah I mean, you know it could you, you you put that much hype behind behind that opener and then you fall flat you know you could you could you could lose your kids. Yeah. And I think that you're playing Fitch in week one as compared to if we would have played that same team in week eight, mm -hmm. that team got really good as the year went on. And obviously the two weeks of preparation leading into that game mm -hmm. from a defensive standpoint, I think played a big factor because they were kind of rotating quarterbacks in week one. 
uh, between Nick Cisliano and I'm mm-hmm. trying mm-hmm. to remember who Savinsky or the other quarterback yeah, was. But they really got it rolling as the season went on. And I want to say they made it all the way to state semis. I want to say they lost to Ignatius that year in the state semis in D1, which oh, yeah. obviously is a pretty big yeah. deal. Yeah. You know, we rode them with computer points. And again, you know, still 9-1 and one and you're not, you know, we had to go win in week 10. To yeah. secure that spot. Yeah. Yeah, solid. Who was that one loss against? Was that Boardman? Boardman. Boardman. Yeah, always Boardman. Bad field. <laughs> that field that year. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, make the playoffs for the second straight year, uh, playing Bookdoll, who is, at that time, you know, that's another one, another program that, that was really, really good. And now is, you know, falling on tougher times. They were they were back to back defending state champs. Ricky yeah. Powers. Yes. Yeah. Running back from Michigan. So, you know, here again, I mean, how how's that as as a player? Um, I I I, I think you're right. You know, the the whether you're going to get in, you only got four teams, so you really don't know till Saturday morning. At that point in time, um, it's kind of like the NCAA. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Draw, you know. Said, you did. You waited until you got a call from one of the coaches to let you know, or if hearsay came out, you know, it was a phone call. You yeah. know, it wasn't. And the thing is, too, we didn't know anything about any of these other teams. There was no social media. There right. was not like, hey, let's look up, you know, Akron Book, don't see right. what they've done. I mean, Joe Idol wasn't handing us information. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was crazy. Like when you found out who you were playing. And I think that's that that was always kind of the cool thing is is playing people from outside the region or that you don't typically it it enhances the uh excitement of it. Sure. Um so that game, the first win, any 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 memories from that pregame speech. Yeah. That's, my, that's gotta be mine. I mean, obviously, it, you know, it, they were one of those teams. I I don't know, like we play them 10 times, do, do we get, you know, how many times we get them? We, we just played a really good game that night. Yeah, we did. Um, all around. You know, obviously the weather <laughs> changed right at kickoff. But, uh, you know, there were some pivotal points in that game, and it came down to a couple, uh, I, I, I want to say the second touchdown pass was a fourth down play. Yeah. Um, like, Quick we straight. got down there on uh, – we had like first and goal from the three and got stuffed like three straight plays mm-hmm. and ended up finding Dwayne in the back of the end zone. But they were good. I never seen a team run that type of defense. Uh, yeah. I, it was a 6 1. 6 1. Yeah. <laughs> Reggie Garnett. Reggie Garnett running wild. Um, uh, I, I remember uh, coming in on the bus and they were on the practice field already and they were in all black. Intimidating. And, and 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 they were like buffalo breathing <laughs> steam. I mean, it was it was ominous. Yeah. I mean, it really was. They were big. They were big, yeah. fast, strong. Yeah. I mean, they had it all. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a great game. Yeah. Um, then the following week, um, that was at Mollenkoff. Yeah. The next week went. The next Boardman. week was at Boardman um, versus uh, Louisville, uh, and. That one didn't work out so no. well. You know, we didn't – and the thing about that game, and I think that's one game that bothers me more than anything, is because I, I still think we're the way better team there. We just – we made mistakes that we hadn't done No, all uncharacteristic. Year, all year. Put the like, ball on the ground. I mean, we took the opening kickoff and went right down the field. I mean, we hmm. were moving the ball. I mean, it was a great opening drive. Got within – inside the 20, and I think we turned it over there. Um, and the, you look at the score and you don't realize that game was 7-6 at halftime. Mm-hmm. We went down, scored right before the half. Um, and then just the second half was just a disaster. Yeah. Do you, uh, it seems like, you know, you mentioned this, Ron, like, you know, with, with Louisville at the time. So Louisville had a really good run of success. Mm-hmm. Um, were they... Were they kind of an upstart at that time? Were they consistently real good, or what? What was what was kind of their dynamic? I think they uh, Chris Chris uh, Chris Lip was the coach, and uh, I think 
that he had brought pretty good success because uh, because film exchange I, I I got the vibe that they, he was extremely confident yeah um, and 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 they were impressive on film um, but I think we looked at him as you know a suburban school that will just out tough yeah. Did you do film exchange with him, or who who'd you send? I did it. You I, did it. Yeah, I met him on. on uh, I remember vividly. I met him on uh, two twenty five. Um, yeah, right there. No, oh. off of sixty two. Yeah. Wow, that's that's something that not a lot of people know about today is is the old film exchange yeah. piece, like having to go meet somebody, and coordinate it, and exchange uh, VHS tapes. Yeah. Now they just send it in on huddle. <laughs> on huddle. <laughs> It's a different world. Yeah, I thought, I, I mean, I think we watched them on film, and I still were sitting in the locker room during the day and watching them, and like, uh, I think our speed will get them. You know, like, they're not going to be able to keep up with us. But they kind of ran a funky offense, the little shotgun. They had a good quarterback, lefty. Uh, matter of fact, I think he went and played baseball at Dartmouth. I played against him in the summertime. But, you know, just tough kids. Like, they, the running back was really good. I mean, they had a really yeah. good little running back. Um, I think they ran a five three uh, defensively, mm, and mm. It, it, and they ran it when we played them again in uh, uh, what was in it o two o two I think yeah o two yeah when we went down there I remember that game they were and and, and that was kind of the you know the the feel that I got you know as as a younger coach watching the film like. None of them are great; they're just all really good. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, and they it's, played good team football. Yeah. Like they were they one were of tough. those teams that, like, you had some wrestlers. Like a lot of their linemen were just and, and it was wrestlers. a community thing too. Yeah. They were right in the. I mean, their their place. Yeah, it was. Is right in the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Um, so. <clears throat> Then you go and you play baseball at YSU. Um, how, how did you end up at, at YSU? What were some of the – were you talking to anybody at the time or were you thinking about playing football or what What was your you plan? You know, recruiting was a little different back then, obviously. I mean, baseball I – I, I have talked to this, my son about this just in comparison how – I mean, we didn't – you know, today's day and age, it, it showcases. It's getting out, mm -hmm. playing, you know, traveling the country in the summer. You know, and I don't know in today's day and age if I would have been able to do both um, to be able to want to play at the next level because of what you're expected to do. Same thing with football. You know, you, we lose kids now in high school that are, you know, some football guys that because they want it, they have to get out there and get to the camps and get to the showcases, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know. So, you know, recruiting back then was, you know, you just hoped you had a good game and there was a coach there. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the old school, you know, eyes. You had to get eyes on you, you know. So I, it was just playing in a, I think it was the Connie Mac, mm -hmm. you know, and just having the opportunity to play Division One baseball. And, you know, obviously YSU had given me that opportunity. And a couple guys in our class was Treveri and Monty Morris. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it was just a great opportunity and, you know, kind of ran with it, you know, so... And I was going to ask you, that that's one of the things I had in my notes, like, um, you know, as an athlete, you really didn't specialize in any one single sport, and then, you know, you've had two sons kind of go through the process now, or, or one that's gone through a, a few years ago, one that's kind of like in the thick of it, or just has been. Um, what do you think... The benefits of being a guy like you, a three-sport athlete, constantly, for the most part, in season. And then, you know, now, if you're really legitimately pursuing that D1 spot, you probably need to specialize. Yeah, um, I totally agree. Um, and I hate to say it because I'm a multi-sport guy. Yeah. Like, I, I'm a big fan of it. I Even from a coaching standpoint, I love when kids play other sports. Uh, especially football players. I always say football players just just that they help you make you as a better baseball player. You know, and I always say you need football players in the dugout. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. I 
Chris Samron's son came and his senior year came back out for baseball and played for like three years and and I told you know the one of our other coaches I said that's a guy we need in the dugout just because what he those guys bring something different and I've always said that it's just they're tough hard-nosed kids and you know it doesn't mean they're great players but you know they they bring something different but I think today's day and age is you know if you really want to go play you know but there's just unique stories out there I mean there's so many good baseball players that if they went and played football Mm -hmm. they'd be great football players and probably can have success you know quick funny story is uh, uh, my son one of his teammates on his summer team a kid from Orchard Park uh, Michigan commits to Notre Dame as a sophomore for baseball so he decides his senior year he's gonna go out for football Mm -hmm. he's like a He's about 6'3", 6'4", uh, wide receiver, uh, runs. He's like a 4'2". Yeah. yeah. So this year he's playing football for the first time in high school. And he decommitted playing baseball at Notre Dame, and now he's being recruited across the country as a wide receiver. Wow. One year. Well, I mean, I think there are certain guys like – Athletically, yeah, <laughs> it, you could do whatever. Yeah, but still, I mean, to be like he was—he was, he was on, cr- at the Michigan game this week and Notre Dame yeah, offered crazy. by Duke. You know, like it's just kind of nuts, though. Like I, I wish it wasn't that way because I wish I could see more kids. Like yeah. we had kids that played that baseball guys that kid that played for us last year that's pitching going to probably be the closer for Ohio State this year. He's up to ninety-five lefty, six-four, you know, two thirty. That kid could have been a great football player. Like, sure. why is he not on the football field? Because he's got to use his off season. Yeah, you know, to do what he's got to do to play at the next level. What do you think? What do you think about that? You know, in terms of you as a coach, you probably made your hay on guys that were constantly in competition because the. the that's also a factor in this. Like, and I'm just going to be honest, like as a guy who, uh, you know, I, I, I looked up to Rick as a player when I was younger, I had a chance to coach with him when we were at YSU, he was there. Like, that's a guy in my, like Rick's a winner. And I think he's a winner because he played baseball and one, he played football and one, he played, he was constantly in competition. And then all of a sudden, like, that's just what you do, you know? So like, you probably made your hay on guys doing that, and what do you think about today where that's not the case anymore? Yeah, it is a specialized uh, uh, scenario today, um, and you know I, I think back even as far back as uh, when I played, the guys, you know, the best athletes on the team were m- multiple sport guys. You know, Don Bernetti was the guy that can play mm, yeah. baseball, basketball, and, and uh, uh, football. Um, ended up actually, I mean, not that he didn't have a phenomenal career with uh, Macaulay Awnings in, in, in baseball, because Cheney didn't have baseball at the time. Um, uh, but uh, um, was a football player at Hiram. Um, but I, he he might he might have played basketball too for him. I don't I don't I don't recall that. But in in any event, um, it's uh, yeah it, it 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 that's where it's where it's it's uh, gravitated to now is that uh, you're you're not going to get uh, many guys that are going to go on and excel in more than one sport. Uh, in, 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 in the bigger programs. Yeah. Um, and we were talking before, like, <laughs> I think with the NIL now, there's a financial aspect to it that, yeah. and it's, and to be honest with you, um, I know everybody says, oh, you know, for the love of the game. And, and I think there probably was a time for that. But the fact of the matter is, you know, you have the opportunity. Some of these guys have the opportunity to make life changing decisions on where they go to school. And I don't, you know, 
I don't think you can take that out of the factor too, which yeah. means I need to double down on whatever sport I'm playing so that I can maximize my opportunities. Right, right. Well, I think the worst part of right now that now the NIL and all that, I I agree with some of the things that, you know, the players should get a whatever. You know, I still think a free education is better than mm-hmm. anything, but I think this portal is what is going to be the demise of, mm. and, beca- and I've gotten to see it firsthand from a parent standpoint, mm-hmm. you know, like being recruited by a school, okay, you know, you commit to a school, the end of the season, they fire their whole staff, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well, they bring in a coach from TCU, and now, like, he's a portal guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm not big on... Uh, you know, like player building. Yeah. I'm just going to go find the best players that jump from program. I and mean, you're seeing it with a lot of college football players. Oh, God, does some of these guys play with a different team every year anymore? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's it, these kids, they just, you don't know. You know, I go somewhere. Well, how do I know they're not going to portal somebody else? Uh, yeah, I you, mean, you don't have to sit out. You and know, I that, think that's the problem I have with it. It's, it's, uh, Hmm. I don't know how to say this. You know, sometimes sometimes you make a rule to address the exception ra- rather than everything else. And I think there probably are times. Well, I, look, there there are times where guys go to college, get the you know run of the deal. Um, but you know, what about the what happens when you're faced with that difficult time and then you stick with it, and then oh by the way, you end up. You know, become a starter, and you those life lessons, and and you're better for it. That stick to itiveness is gone. That's where I'm seeing it different from a coaching standpoint, mm-hmm. as to the way we came up mm-hmm. is competing. You know, I, I might, you know, I, I strictly remember like you know not being a starter in a certain position, and you know, and my father telling me that. Hey, you know what? Get better. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't say, "Hey, well, let's jump schools." You know what? That coach yeah. is screwing you. Let's go play at another school. He said, "Compete, get better." So you had mm-hmm. to figure out a way to compete and get better. So in today's day and age, and it's hard. That's why I'm having a hard time coaching anymore. Is when kids don't get their way, mm-hmm. these parents are there's excuses that, and it's always like, "Okay, well, let's do something different. Let's run somewhere else. Let's do. It. How about just compete?" You know, try to get better. Try to win a job. Yeah. How, how many kids are are in the huddle with their hands on top of each other saying one, two, three, Cheney, or one, two, three, Boardman, or, okay, how, how often does that exist today? I, 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 I think it's, it, it's becoming a memory. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say, that it doesn't exist because it does. I mean, look at a p- program like South Range. I mean, what Yeagley's done there. Um, those those kids, I think, live and breathe South Range. Okay, and and, and I don't I I just don't know how much of that is out there. Uh, it, it doesn't appear that a lot of that's out there. Well, I think if you talk about managing people in general now they talk about like (laughs) managing millennials like if i tell you if you told me to do a b and c and this doesn't make me better worse or whatever i would do a b and c okay now as somebody that deals with people i'm going to tell you to do a b and c and then I also have to tell you why I want you to do A, B, and C and how it's going to be better for the organization or team to do A, B, and C. And, and am, I, am I incorrect in that? Not at all. And I think, you know, that's where... And with that becomes the whole marketing piece. Have I got to market myself? And I got to sell myself? And... I'm part of this program, but you know what? I also I also have a brand mm-hmm. that I'm trying to benefit within the context of the program. Like society's changed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Well, if kids, a lot of times, if they don't get exactly what they want right now, yeah, they can't go through the process 
of trying yeah. to get to, you know, they, like they're not willing to climb the hill. Yeah. To put in the time, to put in the effort, to do whatever. We'll get, you know, put in that extra. If you want to do that, it doesn't mean you're going to get it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But that's what they want now. And, and I, 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 God, even from a teaching standpoint, I, I think a lot of times we're just, we make excuses, too many excuses in today's day and age for kids and why they can't do something. And, you know, there's always a reason, you know. Sometimes you're just not good enough, right, Coach? It's not for everyone. <laughs> and and you know what? And and what's what's wrong with just being a good high school football player? There's nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? Like, well, I think that's the that's, expectations <clears throat> nowadays. Everybody from starts to the age of eight, my kid's going to be a D1 player. Right. And that's what they're filling these heads with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, you you were a great little league guy. You know, like, well, you should be a great. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what, you know. what? Think about this. What was the one thing that we would say at a recruiting meeting, to when we met with the parents, is, let's let's get this straight right up front. Your son has a better chance of getting an academic scholarship than he does an athletic scholarship. Three percent. Now, number? how many parents believe that? I, I want to say it's like 3, 3%, 3%, 6%. Well, yeah, I mean, and it's, and even at that point, even at that point, it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> you, you know, like, <laughs> that's, that's when, that's when the real work starts. Yeah. Everybody, you know what they want too. A lot in today's day and age too. And I, I believe me, I even told my oldest before he went and played in college. I said, "I'm just, I'm gonna be the guy that. This isn't fun, mm-hmm. you know. Like this is a job. It's gonna be school and baseball. That's all you're gonna do. If you're thinking that this is, you know, and a lot of people they just want to send out that social media thing that so and so committed to here and there, you know. I said when you get there, that it, it, man, it, it's. You, you know what it's like. I mean, you saw it firsthand. I, I, by the time I was done by my fourth year, you know, you're like almost ready to be done with it. Like I didn't, and it's a tough, it's a tough road. Well, yeah. And I, and, and, you know, I, I had my injury. I, I just, I, there comes a time where it's like, you have to make a mental decision that, there's no other path except this path you know like i i am not going to quit or I, you yeah. because it is it is it is not fun and i think i think it's designed like that at the start to weed those out yeah. um but uh and i always say my high school experience honestly uh between football and with coach pope and baseball i don't know if i had did not have that kind of regiment and toughness of like our condition in the summer, our doubles, the way things, that really helped me playing in college. Mm-hmm. Because I was used to that, like, I mean, we just, we were treated differently. It was tough. I mean, our our conditioning was not easy. I mean, <laughs> I mean it really wasn't. I mean, no. some of the stuff that would happen then, probably would lose your job for it today. Yeah, you know? pretty but, much. But we didn't go home and, like, tell our parents, you believe you believe what the coaches did today, you know? So it was 95. They turned off all the water and dumped all the ice out, you know? But, <laughs> did that actually happen? Maybe. <laughs> no comment. There's a, lot I think of, there's a lot of stories out there. I've heard Pope, I've heard stories about Pope kicking over that water. Was, it was Pope. Okay, that's what I thought. But I loved it. I mean, like, that's what I remember. Like, that was... <laughs> You had cotton running out of your mouth. You know, you were doing your stations. I think we were starting, like, you know, we used to do the little stations yeah. at the beginning of doubles. And it just didn't like how it started. So we took, yeah, we took yeah. water out of the equation. That was always fun. I always remembered thinking, oh, you're new stations. Water is an entity that I, as a player, I know nothing about. He didn't, you weren't allowed was, to have it. No, it just wasn't on the field. Oh, wow. Did you have salt tablets at that time? Salt dispensers in the locker room. <laughs> dispensers. How many? How but many? that was that was the, the the norm. I mean, you also had salt dispensers down the middle in the open art. 
You know, I mean, that's what everybody thought. That's why that's people great. are paying <laughs> to date with their kidneys. I was going to say, had any guys go down or anything? Or Oh, quite a bit. <laughs> quite a bit. Um, I was going to, we, we were talking a little bit about YSU and you, you, you texted me like, hey, what's a dress attire? <laughs> and that got me, uh, that got me thinking about a hazing incident that you gave to me. It was it was the end of our fall baseball. I don't remember that. Well, I'm going to tell you. All right. It was our fall <laughs> baseball, and they're like uh, end of the fall baseball season, and they're like, hey, you know, we we get we have a little party. Somebody had a house up there on the north side. We have a little party, uh, you know, to celebrate the end of fall ball. And when you when you seniors are like, we we dress up for our. Uh, parties around here so you had us i'm thinking man all right my first college party i get to go to it's a night of the ursa mooney game right across the street you're like yeah we were shirt and tie to our parties so all the fr- i knew what was going on so all the freshmen come and shirt and ties and you guys are sitting there making fun of us so i just want to thank you for that i should have told you to come in a shirt and tie you should you could have got me back for that <laughs> yeah right right um oh that's funny no 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 and that that's part of the fun of it um ron anything i know that my wife's gonna be real upset with me (laughs) because we're running late but uh (laughs) you know what you know what i was thinking in all seriousness we should have your wife on here no i I bet her stories hear the the real story (laughs) that 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 probably wouldn't work out i'd be must see tv no i i i would just want to add that that you know um it was (laughs) special having rick rick on uh because he's a special guy and and was just a, a phenomenal athlete and um I don't know if he could beat me in golf, but uh, not. we we played a few times. He cheats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever. No, it was it was it was great 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 to have it on, and a, a, any success that he's had over the years is not, certainly no surprise because um, he was a major reason that we got to getting to the top of that mountain and uh, the program and certainly myself and will always be uh, tremendously appreciative of that fact um, yeah and I think for me I uh, you know like I said your group kind of going through um, that three four five years ahead of me like those were guys that I always kind of admired and looked up to and when I had the opportunity to uh, um, get to know you a little bit be down at YSU for a cup of coffee and then uh, um, coach with you uh, you know definitely didn't disappoint so it was I I was always appreciative of that so um, any any final thoughts yeah I just want to you know obviously thank you guys for you know having me on Um, you know this is the whole podcast in general has been, you know, it's been special, you know, for some of us that have been out for almost 30 years now, mm-hmm. um, you know, to, to kind of reminisce and go back and listen to stories. And, and obviously, you know, I, I, I could tell coach this all the time, but, you know, he doesn't realize, but, you know, obviously the impact that him and, you know, the rest of the staff with Coach Pope and a lot of our coaches, you know, obviously had made on us moving forward in life and wanting to do things and getting into teaching and coaching. And, you know, these guys played a big role in that. Um, You know, those were some of the best times. I mean, obviously being part of that program meant the world to me. Still does to this day, you know, when we bring it up, obviously talking with friends and things of that nature. but yeah, it, it was a big part of my life, and uh, I'll never forget it. And obviously, you know, a lot of people don't realize being on the inside. And, you know, you got to see it from a different standpoint, even though you played at Ursuline and had great success there. You know, you got to be part of some, obviously, some really special times with yeah. some of the teams that you guys have had. And, 
you know, but it's been great. I appreciate everything you guys have done. Definitely. Thanks, man. Thanks, Rick. Good stuff. All right. Coach is in trouble. <laughs>